Welcome back, back to Out of Controllers. controllers. Alrighty. It's another one of the daily grind. Yeah, it is. Let me uh, take, like, and I and now I'm actually still trying to, pe like, pull apart why I like grinding so much. Mm. And I think it's that it's very simple. Yeah. Um, it's not like a an actually mentally taxing thing to do. Yeah. Um, and that it does eventually like accrue this experience that makes even harder things like easier. Yeah. The reason I like it is because um, you kind of get into this autopilot mode. Mm -hmm. um, and I like doing tasks that put me in that mode. Um, it's very calming for me. It's very soothing. I can think about other things. I can hold coherent conversations with people. Like, I am a lot less articulate when I have to, like, do something complicated and also talk. Um, and so, like, the fact that I can just kind of go on autopilot is nice. And also, like, particularly for this channel, I love games that have story, but we have talked about so much more in, like, the few episodes of The Daily Grind than I feel like we get through, like... 10 or 20 episodes of anything else we play. Yeah, that's true. And I've also been thinking about that. I've mm -hmm. been thinking about a lot of things, audience. Evidently. Um, Look at you, Brainiac over here. It's me, <laughs> a maniac. Um, but also, yeah, for one thing, when, when there's a lot of story to get through, we usually we're like, please shut up. I need to pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, or like, my whole thing is, I the reason I watch Let's Plays mm -hmm. is I don't have access to that video game. Mm. So I want to experience the video game um, while, you know, still not being able to play it. So when people speed through the story or, like, completely ignore things, then I'm like, this is, like, I can't, I, I don't know what the story is because you've been skipping over it. And then they're, like, and, and oftentimes also that's coupled with, oh, I don't know what's going on or what I'm supposed to do or how I'm supposed to, like, like what the controls are anymore. Right. Because I skipped over that particular piece of information. And so it's frustrating to me because it's like, no, like, I wanted to hear what they had to say. I wanted to learn how, like, the mechanics of this game, even if I'm not playing it. Mm -hmm. Like, so for me, um, that's really frustrating. And so I always make a point to, like, if not to read the dialogue, because, like, this is Pokemon. It's very simplistic and formulaic. Yeah. Um, if I'm not reading the dialogue, I at least want to make the effort to, like, sum up what Yeah, I I'm about to say, like, sum up. Um, to give the whole gist of what the hell is being said. Yeah. And maybe, like... Why am I trying to use Pidgey? I don't know. He's not in my boy band. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it, then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's true, because we're gonna have to put in a lot of time to train everyone for the Elite Four. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and for me, um... A thing I've noticed about doing these, doing this channel in these episodes and things, oh my god. <laughs> um, sorry audience, I forgot that there was an alarm I set. Uh, but the thing I noticed about doing this show is I have a tendency to think a lot faster than I speak. And I tend to speak rather quickly um, in so far as like my articulation is messed up by how fast I'm trying to speak because I'm like, content is really important and I need to say things for there to be content. I mean, yeah, but if it's inarticulate babble, then... Or, you know, like, what happens when we've been recording for three hours and, like, it's getting to midnight and you're tired and, like, the mumbling increases. It's true. My mumbling <laughs> like, does increase. Like, I n always know when it's time to stop when Dan's mumbling gets worse than usual. Excuse you. But see, I'm also always able to hear myself in recording. Probably because I knew what I was going to be saying. Probably. But, um, it's interesting to do this now because I'm also s now trying to be... I'm trying to let go of that like ferventness that I usually have when we're when we're recording, to like make myself speak a little slower, and think about what the next thing is coming out of my mouth, and I'm like, wow, what an experience planning what you're going to say. I mean, I don't know. It's it's not always about for me. Like I talk pretty quickly as well. Um, and for me, it's not always about planning what I'm saying. It's about listening to what I'm saying and like um 
listening to like am i articulating enough and if i'm not i start to articulate more mm. um and i my articulation isn't bad um it's not. like it could be better but i'm sure it's pretty good um and it's it's also just like if i say something and i'm like wait a minute that sounded weird i backtrack a little bit and try again mm. um so like for me that's just I don't know. That's just how I do it. It's not about thinking about what I'm going to say. I mean, there's an element of thinking about what you're going to say. It's more about listening to what I'm saying. That seems fair. Um, I think for me also, though, that becomes a problem. Because when I'm trying to tell a story, um, you, usually when I try to tell a story, it falls to pieces very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm thinking about how I want to tell this iteration of me t of me telling the story because it's something usually that I've told before um but then it makes me think of like every other instance I've ever told this story and how they all went and like how my words are coming out and then I'll switch in the middle of a sentence the way I want that sentence to go and then I realize that I've just switched in the middle of a sentence so I have to go back to the beginning of the sentence and say it all again that's legit and I so my <laughs> cadence gets like it's like, boop, boop, boop. it's like a train <laughs> trying to turn with square wheels. Um, so it's just like, boom, boom, boom. And also they're all on different rotations. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's a, it's a train wreck waiting to happen. It, it is a straight up train wreck. What you described is a train wreck. It's not waiting to happen. The minute that train starts moving, it's gonna like explode, like spontaneously combust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even when I was trying to describe that, I noticed that I was backtracking again and trying to re-describe the sentence. Um, and I'm just like, gosh dang, I struggle a lot with, um, like, confidently speaking. Mm -hmm. And, like, even in my daily life, I tend to use a lot of qualifications and, like, I thinks and all these other sort of things. Yeah. Because um, that's, like, my vocal tendencies is, like, couching stuff in I'm not quite sure of reality um, and sometimes that's just because I'm not terribly sure I like noticed the right things or I've like heard something right because sometimes my hearing is off or something like that um, and it's very frustrating because I'm like I want to sound like these people who I listen to because I also listen to a lot of people speak um, both in my life and just in, like, podcasts and things like that, because it's thing I enjoy listening to. Um, and I don't speak with their assurance. And even when I'm trying to quote something that they said that I remember very clearly, I mangle it because I'm trying to get exactly the thing they said. <laughs> and, like, and that's legit. Um, and, like, for me, I was raised by two different people, both of my parents, um, were both professional actors when I was a child. Neither of them are anymore, but like, I was raised in an environment where language was paid special attention to, and they were both very articulate people, um, who enunciated very well, um, and I just, like, I, and I'm, I also have a good ear for mimicry, um, and so that's like, I just, I had that advantage, this is gonna sound weird to say, but like, I had that advantage growing up, um, so that now speaking is a lot less, is, isn't nearly as difficult for me, um, I hardly have to think about it anymore. Um, because I've never really had to think about it, because I constantly had these, like, role models of um, speaking, um, because my parents both worked very hard on how they spoke, because that's really important when half of your craft, half of how you make your money and, like, put food on the table comes from how you speak. Yeah. And, like, if you're on stage and you're mumbling or slurring your words together and it's not a deliberate choice, and you can tell when it's not a choice, when you're just kind of doing it. Mm -hmm. Um... Like, nobody's gonna understand you. Yeah. So, like, from a really young age, I have been... I've been a very articulate person. I've been very good at enunciation. Um, and I've been able to project really well because I just... I had those examples growing up. 
Right. And like... Fuck! Every time. Uh, in between episodes, I might try and see if we can switch that. No, it's fine. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, it's not going to be a frustrating nope, thing nope. that you do very frequently? Well, it is going to be a frustrating thing, but that's half the charm. That is true. <laughs> Except charm's a different move. Uh, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I mean, I had to make the joke. Uh, all right. Next time out of controllers, more of this. Yep. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Watching is more accurate. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>